This is Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog. Sports 225 with Lee Feinswog is Baton Rouge's longest running and best television show. Who would have believed that? Sports 225 is brought to you by Breck. Remember, it all starts at Breck. Now, your host, Lee finds one. What is it? Okay, cool. Oh, it's Sports 225. My buddy Glenn Gilbo from the Gannett News Service is here with me. And uh, we got all sorts of things to talk about because I, I haven't even seen you in a long time. And you haven't been on the show since uh, late in the fall. And since then, we had the end of football season. We had this debacle of what's the LSU basketball season. There was recruiting and signing, your favorite time of year. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we're on the cusp of really his favorite time of year, spring and jazz festival and music season and all that. But uh, so the Mavericks, watch. the Mavericks will be at the jazz fest. The this Mavericks, year. good band if you've never seen no, them. No, no, I don't know the Mavericks. Kind of a rockabilly rock uh, country band. They're good. You should. I recommend them. You know what? The only thing worse than country. It's not. I, I don't. I don't really like country, but but they're they're kind of country. You know. Um, you know, last year I went. Uh, and normally, since I've gotten older and I don't like the gigantic crowds, I avoid the gigantic stages. Sure. But, I, but it That's was such a beautiful day and watched Steely Dan and yeah. stayed for the entire set. They went well over an hour, played so many songs. They had a fantastic band and uh, what a great set. And it was like 72 degrees and sunny. It oh, couldn't yeah. have been better. It's the, one of the great things about the Jazz Fest is, is kind of the second line acts like the Mavericks, you know, Lyle Love it. You can see them in a nice, intimate yeah. situation rather than a, a huge crowd. And the Blues Tent is, is, is my favorite spot where Tab Benoit plays. You can always see all the guys from Baton Rouge when they play, like Ray Neal and Larry yeah. Garner if he's there, Kenny Neal when he does it, and all those guys. It's great. Should be good. Yeah, well, that's a different kind of recruiting. But uh, <laughs> let's, let's, start, let's start with the Super Bowl since it's still fresh in mind. When, when the Flake Gate happened last year, did that matter to you? And do you think it was a big deal? It well, should have been as big a deal. It, you know, on top of Spygate, I don't, I don't know if the Flake Gate, you know, I don't think it helped the Patriots win, and I don't even know how much Spygate helped them win. Mm -hmm. But what I don't like is that even if it didn't help them win, they're still cheating, or they're trying to, to push the outer edge of the envelope of, right. of, of cheating. And I, I don't like that. You know, I mean, but let me they, ask you they, they're always, you know, trying to push it. Why don't they just just, just play play right? You know, it's their, their culture is to try to cheat. Does it you bother know? you when a guy gets to second base in baseball, though, and figures out the signs and tells the batter when a pitch is coming, a curveball or, or a fastball or whatever? Well, that's, just, that's during know. the game. That's yeah. that's not as uh, you know, and that's and that might be the other team's fault for not disguising them. You know, that's not putting cameras into the other team's locker room. And which are some of the accusations of the, of the Patriots. I mean, uh, I think that's a little more gamemanship, and, and it's during the game, so I don't have a problem with that. That's guys flopping in the NBA? <laughs> well, no, that's, 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 that's different. It's gamesmanship, that's, too. No, just, uh, you know, that's, just throwing yeah, out that's some. A, that's a wimpy gamemanship. Wimps, well, okay. <laughs> Nonetheless, um, you as a, a lifelong, uh, kind of a Saints fan, even though sure. as a journalist, you know, you're, when you, when you cover them, I know you take a, a neutral viewpoint. But well, you I was like happy. I was happy when they went to the Super Bowl because it meant you had to cover signing day for me. You remember that? I did. <laughs> that, I had to cover oh, signing day. I think of that every signing day. For the Man. Gannett News Service. Why That's couldn't right. the Saints go to the Super Bowl this year? Yeah. But, um, uh, yeah, no, what I, were you saying? Oh, no, and I remember I got there late that day, and it was a year when fans were not that happy about LSU at that point in February. And uh, might have been, was it after the National Championship? That was 2000. Year? 10. So it was, it after, was after the it was after a four loss season in 09 and their yeah. second four loss season or five loss season in a row. So, so by yeah. the time I got to the event, yeah. so let's just say I got there in time, you know, because I wanted to see Les Miles speak. You know, m more people had come down off their buzz. They had stopped drinking by then, yeah. and they were they were not a happy group, you know. Yeah, I think they might have got Reuben Randall that year, but I don't remember who but. they misused. Uh, through college, but that's another story. <laughs> Somehow I got off the whole Super Bowl thing. So um, <laughs> you were asking about the, oh, the, the oh, Falcons. Oh, yeah. So, so there's so many people who who are Saints fans who take glee in the Falcons losing, which you know. I, I didn't get that. I, I didn't get that because you know I see why LSU fans hate Alabama because they've kind of they dominated them in the '70s. They, right, they right. beat them a lot. Atlanta's never really dominated the Saints. I think they may lead the overall series, but in the last since Peyton's been there, the Saints have won that. And the Falcons have never really given the Saints just a, 
a blood curdling loss like mm -hmm. that 21 nothing loss LSU had to Alabama. There's never really not since 78 when you had the two Big Ben games with Steve Bartkowski um, that kept the Saints out of the playoffs and, and let the Falcons in. There was a name I didn't expect. To two hear. games in three weeks they lost like on the last play, both 20 to 17. <laughs> but but really, you know, so I, you know, I, I don't see why there's so much hate for the Falcons because the Saints usually beat the Falcons. So. I didn't, I didn't really get that. So I wanted the Falcons to win, you know, because I'm just tired of the Patriots story in a way. Yeah, Much yeah. like I kind of really kind of getting tired of the Alabama story, too. I kind of like seeing Clemson win the national championship. So it would have been a nice two for Saban and Belichick losing back to back. That, that would have been cool. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I like Saban, you know, it, it would have been a, a change of pace. Right, right. You know. Like that old Miller Lite commercial with Bob Euchre. Sports fans, got to love them. <laughs> <laughs> And you're going way back now. Uh, the U had just been back to 1978 with Steve Bartkowski. Oh, that's true. Yeah, okay. that's okay. right. No, no, I, I like the Atlanta team, too, and I like the way they played. But um, uh, just too um, many passes there at the end, man. Just, just a couple of runs, get a field goal, get out of there. Yeah, yeah. All right, favorite commercial? Uh, the, uh, the, the Trump uh, hair commercial? I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> but what's thinner on Trump, his hair or his skin? <laughs> Oompa, thank you, thank you. Um, I like the little girl in the Audi commercial, the girl in the little soapbox derby thing. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was funny. Yeah. The halftime show was pretty good, too. Um, Lady Gaga, that was a good performance. She's good. Oh, yeah. And uh, um, Bruce she, is still in the top five, though. I, I heard a lot of people saying the top five, and, and Bruce is still kind of in there, so that's good. I, I'm the biggest Who fan that ever lived, and I still can't believe they did the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was the, the Saints year. That was awful. Yeah, that was awful. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that good. Um, I enjoyed the press conference though. The the, the 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 halftime talent has a press conference like the Wednesday or Thursday before the game, and it was like, man, you wow. got to go see with yeah. Roger Daltrey, Roger Daltrey, and Pete, Daltrey and Peter Townsend, Townsend, like right up there, like kind of wow. like less, you know. That I'm jealous of. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. That was a uh, like when um, a few years ago when Elton John was here for a tennis charity event. And uh, I'll leave us this segment, which we're probably long over on this, but everybody <laughs> else was asking him all these questions. And they kept referring to the local media, Sir Elton. They kept calling him, Sir, why? Because, so finally I told the PR person, look, I got a question, but I'll wait till everybody's Benny and the Jets, yeah. what was your philosophy? Yeah, yeah, so they were all given this, uh, well, that's actually that album. <laughs> and so um, they're all asking him questions about how must, good it must feel to help raise money for, you know, AIDS awareness and, and research and everything. And they're talking a little bit of tennis and finally, so finally she looked at me and she goes, all right, this is your chance. I go, excuse me, uh, Elton. Yeah. So I'd like to ask you about uh, goodbye. Yellow brick road. <laughs> the, um, it was a big double album. Remember it's a yeah. funeral for a friend and Benny yeah. and the jets and, um, um, candle in the wind and all this. I said, is it true that you and Bernie Taupin wrote that thing in one weekend in Jamaica? Wow. Good and question. He, and he looked at me and he goes, well, sort of, but not really. He goes, Bernie got a lot of his, you know, stuff done there and then um but then we got kicked out and we had to go to the chateau which i happen to know is the chateau that they have in france just because i know my rock history and the rest of them were all just looking at me like are you kidding me and uh, he goes and I, I said man i really appreciate that and i said i have a lot more questions but i know it's not the time or place maybe i'll get to see you again thank you That's and maybe great. i'll get to see you again and glenn gilbo again i'm lee fine so i'll get sports 225 and we'll be right back Hi, I'm Joe Martin, president of ITI Technical College, and I really encourage you to come out to our 12-acre campus here on Airline Highway in Baton Rouge. Contact ITI to enroll in our Construction Management Associate and Occupational Studies degree program. Learn to plan, coordinate, budget, and supervise construction projects, and collaborate with engineers and architects in the residential, commercial, industrial, and heavy civil construction industry sectors. Call now about this new, exciting career degree. ITI Technical College. Begin your journey to a better life. Back on Sports 225, where we continued the rock and roll conversation through the break. Glenn's reading <laughs> Bruce Springsteen's autobiography, and um, there you go. Details we don't need to know. We uh, don't need to know. <laughs> but I did spend the summers of my youth in Asbury Park, New Jersey. Remember, there's that was the of, album that made him famous. Yes. Greetings from Asbury Park. That was his, his, his first album. There's, there's yeah. a lot on his, uh, his early years. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a fascinating book. I went to the Stone Pony once, the bar, when yeah. I was older, yeah, yeah, where he, he performed. Uh, and, and oddly enough, you know, I'm not the biggest Springsteen fan. I, uh -huh. I like him, and I like listening, yeah. but yeah. but I've never been to a show. I never had the, uh -huh. I never had the endurance to go to one of his yeah. three or four hour shows. Yeah, it's, it, it yeah. does take a lot of uh, yeah. commitment. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we are uh, taping this on Tuesday morning, 
where it's like Armageddon outside as well. Hopefully by the time you're watching this on either Cox 4 CST or the Sports 225 YouTube channel, the weather's much nicer. Um, LSU plays basketball tonight at Kentucky, and regardless, I mean, even if LSU were to upset Kentucky tonight, um, it wouldn't make any difference in the grand scheme of things of what has just become a sinking ship beyond. That even, would be a even, shocking upset. That would be would Chaminade, be. Virginia. <laughs> that would be a huge well, upset. Well, it is a conference game, so you know it's not like <laughs> it's not like an NAIA team, even though. Well, ooh, ooh. what? Yeah. How, how did this happen? Boy. Um, you know, I, I thought they were not going to be that good this year, but I, I didn't think they'd be this bad, you know. And, and a lot of it's the, the loss of Craig Victor, which was a, a school policy decision. Um, but, uh, you know, that, that was big. But I don't, I don't think they might have two more wins if, if he was still here. But they, um, you know, and they, they have some – they've had less – talented teams at LSU that have won more games than this. They no got some players on that team. No, it's yeah. just, you know, they Do you know that I, I mean I did the research cuz you know every, every Tuesday now at 4:15 we change the day. But I go on with uh, Matt Mascona and we talk about stuff and a couple weeks ago I did some research and you know Dale's Dale Brown's last four seasons at LSU were losing seasons. Sure. And it was a really hard time. Sure. And then there, this is the 19th season since. And so in that time you had Trent Johnson, then you had John Brady well, now, John course, Brady, then Trent Johnson. I mean, John Brady, yeah. then Trent Johnson, and then, and then, of course, Johnny Jones. The last two years, LSU's gone 11 and 7 in the SEC. In the time that I just covered in those 23 years, LSU's only had six seasons in which they, it's been over 500 in SEC play. And two of them were the last two years. And last year, they finished second in the SEC and didn't get a bid. Right. So, so that means you're talking about a 23 year span. We're only six times you've been over 500 in league play. And right. of course, in that time, you've had a round of 16 with Brady. You've had a final four with Brady. You Second had, round with Trent. Yep, yeah, good. And, 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 but it's always been a team, not a program. And, and, and feast or famine. Exactly. You know, I mean, Brady's greatest teams were followed by one win and two win teams. Correct. The same with Trent. Yeah. And, and the same with Johnny yeah. this year, you know? And so it's fair to say that this is a very dismal basketball program it's not fair to say that it's a good program or has been a pro good program for almost 25 years yeah the the, the best run was was uh from uh 03 to 06 because the two years right. before brady went to the final four they were they were they went to the tournament the, the year before they went to the final four they mm -hmm. won and out with uab and and the year two years his, before his, his, yeah right his, his three-year record the, the, when they went to the Final Four, he had the best three-year record of any coach in the SEC at that time. Yeah. People forget that. Um, and, you know, but, but Brady was up and down, but he had scholarship limitations, you know. But, but when he had players, they were good, mm -hmm. you know. And then Trent just couldn't recruit at all. And Johnny can recruit, but he's, he's not the, the floor coach. So, you know, they've had a little bit, but never enough, you know. Yeah. And I, I just, it's, it's really depressing. How, how bad they, they, they've been this year and how bad they've been at other times. Yeah, and, and you know, as somebody who likes basketball and enjoys it when it's a really fun atmosphere in that building. I mean, last week at game's end, the game, the game oh. uh, how, how many people were in there, would you say? Oh, man, maybe a couple of thousand. And, and, you know, Brian Lazar made an interesting comment. He said, you know, this team doesn't even get booed. It shows you how little people care because, you yeah. know, Brady got booed. <laughs> <laughs> he got booed in some games. Yeah, but Brady was always ticking somebody off. Yeah, Johnny's such yeah. a nice man. Who's but but there was still the right there was things. more passion though. You know, I mean, it's like there's just no nobody really cares about yeah. basketball. And this is something that we we beat around and have to. It's it's inevitable there'll be a coaching change. I, I would think so. Yeah, you know, I, I couldn't see it not being. And in fact, I, I kind of think almost uh, for Johnny's sake, I almost kind of wish they'd relieve him. You know, to take some of the, the pressure off or the the monotony of it. Uh, and let him look for something else. But, um, you know, I, I can't see him coming back next year with the same staff. Yeah, no, he's um, – no, I, and, and I'm, I'm on record for saying unless a coach has done something wrong and there's really a, an issue either morally, legally, NCAA-wise, that they should never get fired during a season, which is why I still am opposed to having Les Miles have been fired. And I hope Johnny gets to finish the season on his own terms. But it's just he, – he must be so upset that these kids can't play for him. Can't or won't. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you see a lack of effort uh, at, at times, you know, but, but there's a lot of things that are clearly his fault, too. Uh, you know, they don't seem to have a lot of um, 
thinking into the offense, and they don't play a good defense. Yeah, but other than that, it's all good. Right. They do score a lot of points, but <laughs> they give up an incredible amount of points. Glenn Gilbo's here. He covers LSU, the SEC, and other things for the Gannett News Service. You can see him not only in USA Today, but in the Lafayette Advertiser and at uh, some TV station in New Orleans. I still don't get that, but whatever. Anyway, and follow him <laughs> at LSU, LSU Beat Tweet. I'm Lee Feinstrog. We'll be right back on Sports 225. <laughs> Oh, hi. I was checking out Yelfi. I do it all the time, all day, because it brings me all the news I need to know in sports. I mean, I've got a customized news feed, uh, real-time scores. It's integrated with Facebook and Twitter. You download it on iTunes, Yelfi, Y-E-L-L-F-Y. It's a great app and a fantastic Twitter feed. I don't even know what Glenn's laughing about as we're coming back. What are you laughing about? The countdown. It was, oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's you like know, a very it's, panicky countdown. No, I mean, no, my he's God. good. He's good. It's TV. <laughs> you know, they give you the three, two, one. They give you all this other stuff. You know, and this, this is obviously big time TV. Ooh. But we're not going to um, jump from anything like uh, Lady Gaga did. What a great move and a great catch, too. Thank goodness she, had, she showed good hands. I don't, what did she land on? Did you ever, was they ever show that? I wasn't, I wasn't sure, man. But, uh, she's captivating, that's for sure. She is. She's a um, she's a very very good performer, and uh, you can see I'm the a, Madonna influences. Oh, no in doubt. Her, but, no uh, doubt. Yeah, she's she's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, Glenn's here. Won't be a jazz fest though. No, <laughs> Lady Gaga. I, yeah, she. I oh, can that see would her. be an interesting jazz fest. Maybe someday. She and Tony Bennett, you know, doing their deal. Tony. Tony's. That's right. She was a jazz fest. Was she with him? I think so. Maybe. I'm, I'm getting something confused. Tony Bennett was there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I can look it up in the next break, but I'm not okay. going to look it up now. Lady Gaga Jazz Fest. <laughs> um. <laughs> Sorry if I got you off track. No, no, no. You know, Glenn and I have known each other for a very long time. Well over, you know, it's got to be 30 plus years now. I've been in Baton Rouge 32 years. You yeah. might have been at Tiger Rag when I moved here. Yeah, in 83 you moved in. Yeah, right? 84, yeah. late 84. Yeah. yeah, I was at Tiger then, Rag at yeah. the time. And uh, we both have the distinction of being advocate exes. And um, uh, we, we share an affinity for music and, and music festivals. And uh, I got a couple of volleyball coaches from around the world who want to come visit. And I told them, you got to come in the spring and you go to places sure. like Phil Brady's where the cover charge is like five, six bucks and you get to see unbelievable music. and come see the festivals great the Baton Rouge Blues Festival is going to be great this it year. it is it is um, great the, lineup. the uh the the music in Baton Rouge is is really good during Jazz Fest because some of the same acts come over you know? exactly yeah um anyway how, how we make the transition to uh, football recruiting which we alluded right. to in the very beginning right I told the story the other day on uh the radio about the first time I ever recruited covered a recruiting thing was Fess Irvin's basketball signing to come mm -hmm. to LSU mm-hmm and uh, it's really, it's a long story, and I can't waste the time From here, Gonzales, but, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Who did he choose LSU over? I don't remember. Because he was a big time. He was a good, he yeah, was a good player. Yeah, he ended up, he played two years and transferred to James yeah. Madison. Right. But you could go, uh, uh, probably at 104.5 ESPN, they, do, they, they save it like podcasting. If you're really bored, <laughs> you could watch this, read, listen to the story. <laughs> anyway, I was just, just, the end result was, is that he signs, and the thing's over. And uh, I, I, I I, I couldn't believe this, all this fanfare. Because, you know, 1985, that was, you didn't cover sure, stuff like that. Sure, But sure. they had jambalaya. And <laughs> it's over. And, after, and, and then they wheel around a brand new, it was a Datsun. Remember Datsun? Yeah. 280ZX with Fess on the license plates, airbrushed. And years later, I brought it up with Dale. I said, yeah, but I, I said, I never gave you even a hard time about Fess Irvin getting that brand new sports car. And, and Dale yells, Johnny, this is back when they were in the, in the assembly center in their offices, Johnny, bring me Fess Irvin, the receipts from his parents buying him that car. <laughs> Dale, I don't care, you know, whatever, Johnny comes in with the, you know, Middle whatever. Middle folder. Unbelievable, you know, whatever. <laughs> wow, well, it was all legit then. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so LSU had signing day and how, how, how much fun did you have, and what did you think? Because don't forget, you don't get to, the media doesn't eat and drink like the, the regular people getting to watch that all day. Well, I didn't. I didn't go to the Bayou Bash. No, no. Um, I went to the Coach Orgeron's uh, press conference. But I mean, I, I thought he did a, a very good job with the recruiting class. I mean, but it, it needs to be said when he when he took over as the interim coach, Les had already had 19 commitments. No okay, doubt. right. 
And, his and job. His job was to sustain. To sustain it, and he and he did good a good job of that. He lost a couple, but he got a couple of new guys that Les really wasn't on, like Phillips uh, from from Nashville. He, he he got him, and he kept the quarterbacks. You know, so he he kept everything together. But um, really, you have you have to give a lot of credit to to Les for that for that class. Uh, you know, if Les would have got fired the first time, he'd have been the first coach ever fired with a number one class. Because <laughs> that's what it was ranked <laughs> at the time. So Les yeah. never had a problem uh, recruiting, uh, other no. than the quarterback position. But uh, but Ed did a good job keeping that class together. Um, but you know when you look at Ed, you know his reputation is is as a recruiter, and he's from Louisiana. So I I was expecting him to do a little better because of his reputation. And it's interesting. I thought he'd be able to keep a couple of those guys from going to Alabama, but he didn't. And so many of the guys from this particular class are not from Louisiana. Right, right, right. And, and he knows he's got to get better. He said that at his press conference. Uh, you know, he's got to stop the kids from, from going to Alabama, and he's got to get more uh, offensive linemen. Is it a I, salary I cap issue? Salary cap <laughs> 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 we we got to take this last break. Glenn Gilbert. That might have something to do with it. And Glenn, Dotson's. And the Dotson 280ZX. <laughs> um, I want to get you a Glenn airbrushed, you know, license plate. But you can put it on the front, you know, whatever. Uh, we'll be right back at Sports 225. <laughs> nearly a decade ago that Brett teamed up to imagine your parks and you imagine big. Twelve beautiful community parks from one end of the parish to the other. One family sized water park and five other parks just for your dogs. You have places to splash and places to explore. You have games to play and camps galore. No matter what you like to do or see, visit Breck.org and see how together we have made Breck better than imagined. All right, we're back and coming down the home stretch of this Sports 225. Thanks to John Williams from Think JCW for directing the show. And you can go to sports225.com to see any of the old shows. We archive them all there on the Sports 225 TV YouTube channel. The show airs on Cox 4 NCST. All the listings are there. <laughs> and read all my cool stuff at volleyballmag.com, the artist formerly known as Volleyball Magazine. Um, so... I'm like, just, it's like, I, you got me laughing about other stuff. And while I was doing that, I was trying to concentrate. Now I can't even remember what I got in this last minute. Um, uh, baseball. Baseball. There's, there's LSU up. baseball. It's always good. It's going to be real you know, good. It's still February. I, I just, I'm morally opposed to college baseball in February. Well, but when they've had the basketball season they've had, I'm looking more forward to, to baseball. But I'm with you on that. It's, it's, it's too early. But I think they're going to be really good. I think this is an Omaha team. So that, that, that could kind of save the. Uh, it's been a you know kind of a yeah, bad but whereas season. recruiting's your first favorite thing, your second favorite thing is spring football. <laughs> I would take spring football over recruiting, for Probably, sure. For I think, sure, I think I would, and that that should be an interesting spring football too, with with the new coach and some uh, new quarterback in. But I think Etling is still going to be the guy. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see what what Ed does differently in spring right. football. We got to get out of here. All right, um, they can follow you at LSU B Tweet. Yes, they can read your stuff at LSU. Uh, theadvertiser.com. Theadvertiser.com and WWLTV.com. There you go. And you can pick USA up Today.com. <laughs> Anywhere.com. He's, he's Glenn Gilbo. I'm Lee Feinsrock. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. All right. <laughs> cool. <laughs>